Hi, everybody. I'm John Lieberman. And on today's episode of I'm Thinking Of, I'm thinking of why is ABM so integral to a B2B company's success? And the guest I have with me has a lot of experience in this area. John Russo, the founder and CMO of B2B Fusion. John, it's good to see you. Thanks for your time. John, I'm equally excited to be here and I'm glad we could make the time. Absolutely. So let's jump in. You know, both you and your agency have expertise in account based strategies. Why do you feel ABM is kind of so critical for the success of B2B companies? Yeah, I think there could be a number of reasons why ABM or account based experiences are so critical right now to companies. But if I were to name one, it's really growth. Companies are maniacally focused, especially at the end of the year and now planning for 2022 on what their growth paths are. And because of that, account-based marketing and experience, that becomes a great strategy to reach to the growth objectives that maybe they haven't been able to get to in times past. So just growth alone, I think, catapults it to a really important um, aspect for companies. And, And talk a little bit more, John, you mentioned it, but this idea of ABX, um, what do you see as kind of the uh, the upsides to, you know, almost moving beyond ABM in a way to to ABX? Yeah, great question about ABX and X being the experience as opposed to just marketing. In our experience, and we've had over a hundred plus experiences with account based experience or marketing sales it really encompasses more than just those two functions. It also is now starting to encompass customer service and customer support. So uh, the beauty about the X is it can encompass everything. I think what we found, and we've been doing ABM for a number of years now, uh, when you say M, uh, it sometimes pigeonholes just marketing. And when you're looking at some of the measurements that really ABX enables you to do, it becomes more important to shift the thinking to a broader uh, approach than more narrow at a marketing uh, place. So that's why I think you're you're hearing a lot more ABX than anything today. So when you think about ABM and ABX, what do you, if you had a crystal ball, what do you see as some of the, the main trends over the next few years in this area? Where are we heading and headed? Yeah, where we're, that's a great question on kind of the, the roadmap of, in terms of the future of where we're headed with account-based experience. I'd say the number one thing that we see is really reporting, believe it or not. So a lot of companies have kind of built themselves around the lead-based model, and now they're trying to transition to the account-based model. And when I say lead-based model, over the last decade, Serious Decisions had a number of different models, some better than others. They've all improved with time. Well, now that you introduce account-based experience and you've got this lead-based model, how do you measure both? So I think one of the big trends is actually doing that, measuring it in one unified funnel in Salesforce such that people have the ability to connect any account motion, be it inbound or outbound, all the way to close. I think that's going to be a big, big future. Um, The other thing that I see a lot of companies kind of struggling around is something as basic as lead to account matching because they're struggling with, what do I do with my leads? And it goes back to that old serious model that we were talking about, where a lot of our boards of directors and CEOs, they're conditioned on that lead model. So it's very difficult just to shift over to account-based experience without connecting the two. You'll Mm -hmm. hear other best practice firms talking about, oh, just abandon the leads. Uh, We're probably the minority uh, voice in that and saying, no, (laughs) don't do that. Keep it because you need it all for reporting. So long-winded answer to your question. I think the number one thing in terms of the future of account-based experience is being able to report on the effectiveness. And that's what people are going to be very, very tuned into. Well, it's interesting that you brought up kind of the lead side of it because, yeah, I do think you probably are in the minority, you know, in in general. But if we could go just a little bit deeper there, you know, why is it so important to not abandon that? And is some of that also kind of this idea of change management in an organization? So instead of just, it's it's a little softer too, right? If you just, if you don't say we're just going to abandon this and go to the account-based model, I would think. 
Yeah, it, the, the lead evolution, particularly around salesforce.com has been super interesting for B2B marketers. And there are mixed experiences, but in our experience, and we've polled this over a number of years, about 30% of all organizations abandon leads and go straight to contacts and opportunities. That number surprisingly has really not changed over several years in, in our informal polling and even formal polling. Um, why I think the lead model is here to stay is because it works. It, it is something that at the board and CEO level, they know they've got kind of a North star for marketing to, to look for. But where I see that playing into account base uh, experience or marketing or sales is I see the leads as an ingredient in an engaged account. So the lead itself becomes less important from a pure or a raw measurement perspective, but it's an ingredient into that marketing qualified account cake. Well, let me give you a specific example on that. So if somebody does a contact us and they're brand new to the buying committee and brand new to the organization, that could be considered a lead or could be coming in as a lead or a very hot or qualified lead. They may have had some anonymous engagement of which a system like yours could capture, and it would or could potentially hit a threshold to alert the salesperson to say, hey, you've got a marketing qualified account to go after here. So I think the lead, um, it, it becomes very, very important there. <clears throat> Where I think some of the other organizations miss that is perhaps they are, um, you know, uh, perhaps there are vendors like yourselves that are uh, pure play account-based strategies. And in some cases that does work. Like I said, in about 30% of the time that could work, but in the vast majority, it doesn't work because the lead model has been existing for so long. So that's where I see leads as part of the marketing qualified account. And I think there, it's going to be here to stay for quite some time. And, and last question I have for you is kind of what mistakes are B2B marketers making right now that, you, that you're seeing that can be easily sort of rectified or, or remedied? Oh, gosh, I could rattle off a bunch of mistakes I'm, that we I'm see. I'm sure, um, yeah. And, and learn, lessons learned on ourselves, too. Um, it's funny because I was going to make a video about this, too. And the analogy I would use would be a gym membership analogy where it's easy to buy the gym membership. Uh, but it's getting the personal trainers to help accelerate the progress. If you're not making progress on your own, um, a lot of times companies feel like they're doing ABM by buying the systems, they buy the gym membership, but they're not putting in the work and they're really underestimating the amount of work that has to occur to be successful in an account based strategy. There are a bunch of different strategies that you can go after one-to-one, one-to-few, one-to-many, uh, it's really situational depending on the type of company you are and kind of your history as well. And there's like mistakes within each of those categories. But I'd say the number one issue that we see is companies underestimate the amount of energy it takes to successfully pull off even a pilot. If they do that right and they invest the time right, um, they have a better chance of seeing the measurable results that they want to get to and to prove things out. Uh, but if they're doing this off the back of a napkin <clears throat> or an extra responsibility uh, or don't have executive support as as part of that initiative, it becomes near impossible to pull off the level of sophisticated outreach that account based experience really requires. Wow, great insights. John Russo, founder and CMO of B2B Fusion. John, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Hope we get to chat again. And next time, hopefully we can talk a little bit more about college basketball because I know you're a huge college basketball fan. So maybe we'll set something up for March and we'll just do a discussion on March Madness or something. Absolutely. I'd, I'd love to do that. I appreciate it, John. And uh, yes, I really appreciate the relationship with Demand Base as well. Thank you. Thank you, John. 